so I recently put out a poll on LinkedIn asking if anyone would like their LinkedIn profile reviewed. Now, your LinkedIn profile is effectively your shop window, okay? That's where people come to see what it is you do, what value you can bring and what you have to offer. So those are the key things that you need to be thinking about when optimizing your LinkedIn. Now, I know a lot of people struggle with this. And on my program, I teach people how to optimize their LinkedIn profile. But I thought today we would do a real time review from a recruiter, James, no doubt you've seen him before on the on the program. But I thought we'd get James on to kind of show you what it is recruiters are looking for, whilst also giving you some tips on what it is you can do on your profile to optimize it and, and look at some maybe some of the things that other people are doing, either right or wrong, so that you know what you need to be doing. So without further ado, let's jump in and I'm going to share my screen on the first profile. Right, so here we have Diane Stevens. Now, um, two things I can see already. She's got her, her banner and a headline. So effectively, your banner is this section at the top. Now, you can do these on Canva. It's a free website. Um, you can pay for it, but you can do a lot of the things on there for free. And I usually say to people on my program to, yeah, have a banner. And so it's eye-catching and a few bullet points around what you do. So if we're looking at Diane, OK, we can clearly see that she is in clinical trial operations. Now, I might say that that's a little bit broad, but um, James, what do you think about about her position? Does that speak to you? I don't. When you say position, I'm not sure what you mean, because I don't know what her position is here. From from what I can see, look, the banner picture. Great. You know, it's trying to highlight what, what you do. And I can see that Diane works in clinical operations, but I don't know what her job is certainly not just yet from what i can see on, on your screen i can see there's 27 years in biotech and pharma uh worked in multiple therapeutic areas i guess for me as a recruiter i'd probably want to know which ones and in all phases again brilliant to know all phases but i guess as we maybe work through this i, I want to know a bit more about it's a bit broad isn't it it's a bit there's yeah it's not specific enough I, yeah, I guess at the moment it is quite quite broad. There may be more more down, but typically when I jump on a profile, ideally I want to know within about five seconds because I, I spend all day on LinkedIn and I view hundreds and hundreds of profiles. The quicker that I can see something that I like, perfect. As you, you said a moment ago, it's someone's shop window mm. and you don't go into a shop if you don't like what you see in the window typically. So it's a reasonable start, but yeah, quite broad at the moment, I would say. And then I guess the headline. So the headline is this section here. Now you have 220 characters in your headline to fill, and that should really speak to the job title, your job title, where your experiences come from, what it is you do, uh, and what it is you have to offer. That's what you're trying to get across in that headline. And your headline follows you everywhere, as you'll see from the people down the side. Every time your name appears on LinkedIn, your headline is underneath it. So that's really kind of your key selling point. So when you comment on people's posts, when you like people's posts, when you post your own posts, we'll, we'll look at my profile in a minute, that headline follows you everywhere. So you really want it to be clear in terms of what you do. The other thing is that when recruiters, headhunters or anyone is searching LinkedIn up here, they're usually searching for a certain job title. And if it's in your headline you're going to show up so again I would probably say that Diane's gone a bit too broad here and that she could get a bit more specific so clinical it's an odd one is it because it's specific and broad because it's 27 years in mm. pharma and biotech so quite specific with years of experience mm. and in clinical research operations but there's no job title I like I, I my space is recruiting in clinical research there's a million and one jobs in clinical research and I don't know from this immediately what diane's job is mm, yeah absolutely so let's scroll down and see if we can if we can suss this out i guess the next section is the about section which again i think is really important because that is effectively a further sell so the headlines drawn them in and then they you want a recruiter or a headhunter to read your about section and really get a good grasp from reading that about where your area of expertise is and what it is you do. How, when looking at a profile, James, I guess what are the key sections that draw your eye in? Of course, well, 
banner profile pic headline of course mm. at the top because that's the first thing that i see that first impression and then yes the about section where ideally i've seen someone's job title in their headline and a summary of what they do so you know it could be their job title years of experience specific niche or niche of where they they work um, and any value added statement i then want the about section to further qualify that i can see from diane she's got mm. a bit more of a career story if you like mm. um a little bit probably block text for my liking i'm a cold hard fact man but what i can see here and i commented it on earlier and you've highlighted it is the multiple therapeutic areas has been unmarked so i can see infectious disease cardiology urology oncology um so that's good what would perhaps improve on that is if i knew how many years in each because out of 27 years which is quite a lot when was this experience and how long for? Mm. But um, also, probably for me as a recruiter, I always say to people that like, 27 years is quite specific and at the upper end could lead yourself into age discrimination. I'd probably maybe cap that at 20. I don't know what you advise your yeah, I, I, coaching I would clients, say, but I would depending say on the level, plus. I would say 20, 20 plus is, is where you should maybe cap it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree because yeah, you twenty seven plus, it's 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 closer to thirty than it is twenty, if you know what I mean. So, let's scroll down then and see. Okay, so then we've got her experience section, and again, we're still not really that clear what it is Diane does. Consultant clinical operations definitely uh, works in clinical operations. Clearly, she definitely works in clinical <laughs> operations, but we still don't know. And I guess. Um, I've just thrown out a few job titles there from when I used to work in, the, in in recruitment in this sector. Director of clinical operations, VP of clinical operations, project managers. You know, there's a lot of positions within the clinical research, clinical operations space. So, yeah, it's not very clear until oh, look, I can see director of clinical research. But that was back in 2021. Then she's moved into, a, again, we need to be more specific, I think, with the job title here. And also, there's nothing saying what it is Diane is doing in this job at the moment. Is she working in, in as a consultant in clinical operations? It just doesn't say anything. And I think that's also the advice I give to anyone. There's no harm. Obviously, a lot of people work as contractors in this sector. So they'll have their own LLC set up and they might work for either several companies at once or they've got 20 years of being a contractor. And in that time, they've worked for 10 different companies. What I would say to people is, Put the names of the companies that you have worked for, not your LLC. Nobody knows your LLC other than you. And it's let's face it, it's just a company name to transact your, your payments, really. It's not, it's not your shop window. You, unless you're building that up and you've got hundreds of consultants working for you and you're working more as a, as a company offering out consultants, it's just you. So I would focus on the company names, the brand company names that you work for, because they are the ones that have that brand reputation. And I had someone on my program recently who'd worked 20 years as a, as a consultant, but had everything under his own LLC. Didn't mean anything. As soon as he changed that over, there was some huge hard hitting brand names in there. And his reach went up in terms of people. He was coming up in much more searches than, than he had previously as well. He broke it down to job title and what jobs he was doing at those positions. So that's what I'd recommend to Diane here. I'd say break I'll down. I'll just add on that, Lucy, if mm -hmm. you don't mind. I guess where you're talking about specific companies and mm -hmm. reach. So as a headhunter, sometimes companies will want to poach staff from certain other competitors. Mm -hmm. So I will specifically put in a job title and company A, company B, or company C, knowing that I'm going to have someone who's worked there. And the reason employers want that is because they know that people coming from those companies are well-trained, well-experienced, maybe have their, a particular set of experience or skill set. And therefore, just by default, having worked there, they tick some of their boxes. And if it's under an LLC, I would never know that. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of a, a, an additional thing, kind of as a real life recruiter still on the ground um, doing that type of headhunting. That is where the company names can be useful for 
mm. freelance consultants. And look, I guess as well on that note, like people often put ex Google or ex Meta employee in their headline because they know that's a sell. If you've worked for some of those big brand names, not suggesting mm. that everyone's worked for those big brand names, but within your sector, within your niche, then that's something to to have on your profile because as james said people but it's credibility people, isn't it it's credibility and people you know sometimes headhunt people for working at that company because they know they'd have been taught in a special way um so yeah i guess diane you need to get a bit more specific in terms of what it is you've been doing as a consultant and the job titles that you're working under the other thing i noticed as well is you've got this residual passive income builder which is great but again think about your audience are you looking to attract more people to help build passive incomes or are you looking to stay in the clinical research space because I would maybe just take that off because it takes away from that clinical research experience that we see down here because it kind of stops the scroll so yeah that that would be my suggestion on that any thoughts on that James before we move on to the next Exactly that. Yeah, I guess when I look at a profile, I'm ideally looking for a clear linear path of progression. And yeah, by putting that right slap back in the, in the middle there, it also looks like the dates overlap. It mm -hmm. just adds a bit more confusion rather than clarity to what Diane does. As I say, I, until I scroll right down to the 2019-2021 job title of Director of Clinical Research, which again is quite broad <laughs> i don't really know exactly what job she would be doing bearing in mind we're now in 2024 so i probably need to do a bit more digging i'd need to reach out i'd need to get a resume i'd need to make a phone call whereas i may well find someone on the very next profile who if i was looking for a director of clinical operations it says the clinical director of clinical operations it's in their banner i can see that they've worked in particular therapeutic areas their experience then says director of clinical operations it makes it a no-brainer for me. And, it, you know, if it's simple enough for a six-year-old to see it, I normally say it's simple enough for a recruiter to see it. Absolutely. Well, let's move on then to Sandra Warren. So here we have Sandra Warren. Again, brilliant. She's got a banner as well, global project, uh, project manager, delivering trials on time, on college. So she's got her therapeutic areas there. Again, another person in the clinical research space. Uh, I guess... The thing that I'm noting here as well is she's got a strategic associate, global clinical project manager. Do we need the strategic associate? James, when you're looking for a project manager, what are you searching? Are you searching strategic or associate? Not really, no. If I'm looking for a global clinical project manager, I'm searching global clinical project manager. Yeah. I know it seems crazy, but whatever a client wants as a job title, that's what I put in my job search kind of path of least resistance yeah so yeah so she's got over 10 years leading phases one to uh wait one to three trials okay fine that's, that's all good trials from concept to completion again you might want to get more specific in your headline you might want to add some of those therapeutic areas that you've got in your banner just because again the your banner is not searchable but your headline is so you might want to move those down and then she's got open to work so open to work with clinical project manager clinical study manager cta uh, clinical trial specialist uh, and line manager roles Quite a broad spectrum there. I would say like the, it's the clinical trial associate one that maybe sticks out for me a little bit there. Mm. That would be one that I would consider. I mean, fair enough, if you're open to it, yeah, not a problem. But if I'm looking for a clinical project manager, typically just, they've got Just well to interrupt beyond... you there, James, because a, a lot of people are probably thinking, why, why is that the difference? But... For anyone that's not working in clinical research, a CTA is quite a junior role in comparison to a clinical project manager. They're quite at different ends of the, the spectrum. So, mm. yes, she may have been a CTA in the past, but if you're going for clinical project manager jobs, you don't want to also be going for CTA because, yeah, as I guess you're going to explain. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of I would I would then question, OK, so what level of project manager are they and like I've spoken to Sandra uh, before she looks she's, she's great but again for anyone who doesn't know her and they're just judging by the profile it can raise questions as to okay why would this person be interested in a clinical project manager role which can pay up to 
I don't know, $190,000 per year, but also interested in a clinical trial associate role, which may pay as low as $50,000 per year. Like there's a massive spread there. Mm. And it just, um, yeah, would maybe raise a little, a few eyebrows with me and say, no, if I was recruiting for my clients, I want someone who is an out and out global clinical project manager. And I know that if I called some of them who are, are making that upper end at 190K and offered them a clinical trial associate job, they would say, James, have you even read my profile? Are you trying to lowball me here? Mm. Um, so again, it's just a little bit contradictory. It's not congruent with the, the other parts of the pro, uh, profile, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that does. So her about section, so she's got her top skills field in, which is great because she's got her therapeutic areas in there. So again, make sure on your profile, you are filling in your skills section. So you can have five top skills in your about section and and I guess they again are searchable so if James is looking for a clinical project manager with oncology experience he might type into that search bar at the top clinical project manager and boolean search oncology and potentially Sandra is still going to come up because she's got the word project manager and she's got oncology in her profile so yeah make sure that you have your top skills and and I think there's so many different aspects of top skills you can you can put in so have a think about when you're reading those job descriptions and when I mean reading the job descriptions I don't mean the day-to-day activities that you're going to be doing I mean look at the requirements what are they looking for what number of years experience are they looking for you to have experience in what um you know whether it's a therapeutic area whether it's a skill set whether it's a program think about those things and make sure that those are in your top skills if of course you have them because again those are the things that recruiters are going to be searching for from that job description that's what they're looking for so use a use a job description as a bit of a cheat sheet for you know what you could put in your profile if you don't already know what what that sells you in your sector so yeah her about section she's got lots of emojis again emojis can draw the eye in you can even have an emoji in your headline we'll jump onto mine in a minute but yeah in my headline we'll do it now actually we can just have a look so again on my banner and headline now obviously I'm mine slightly different to your average employee because I'm I'm selling services I'm actually you know my own business but on here it's very clear what I do okay so I'm helping you get hired in 60 days or less and then I've got a breakdown of my services I've got ask me about my career growth accelerator program which is the program that I run and then here is my headline so I've got a green emoji again it almost draws the eye in I've got helping you get hired in 60 days or less job search coach career coach it literally says what I do on there and you know look I get 96,000 people looking at my profile in the last 90 days. Uh, So that's effectively a thousand people a day. And that's because I have a, a banner that stands out and a headline that stands out. I mean, I also do a lot of posts, as you can see, I've got 1.1 million post impressions there. So I am doing a lot of posts a day as well, which is another thing that you could do on your profile. Um, And I believe, Lucy, your headline, um, it shows up on all of your posts. So I don't know if you can show us kind of a Yeah, so uh, that, that now shows up, doesn't it, right? It does. So yeah, if you see any post um, from me, let's have a look at the one I, my last post. So yeah, look, my last post, as you can see, it comes up with my headline underneath very clearly what I do helping you get hired in 60 days or less job search coach, career coach. And then I've even got a button, which if you press that, request my services it will take you to my services page which I guess if you are a contractor you might want to consider having this on your profile so it's a services page where you could add your project projects you could get uh, reviews on there uh, a bit more about your about your services and then you can people can request my services through there so they can uh, reach out to me it's on me so it hasn't got all the right buttons that you would see but you can request my services from that page and that would effectively take you through to learn more but yeah this is why a headline is so important because it follows you everywhere but let's jump back to Sandra's profile now so 
her about section. So it's broken down into kind of bullet points. She's even got how I can help you if you're looking for an associate clinical project manager or clinical trial and associate. Again, she's kind of got a little bit too broad there, one end of the spectrum. As you say, James, I think she needs to hone in on either or in terms of, of what services that she's got. She's got her skills and competencies there again. So good keyword searches there with, you know, we're searching for any of those key terms. Yeah, there all she's going to come up. Oh, and there she's got common clinical research titles and terms. So again, it's suggesting that um, Sandra is definitely working maybe as a um, as a contractor. So if we could scroll down to her experience section, she's got an associate global clinical project manager, and that's at Precision for Medicine. Uh, she's got a bit about what she does there. Okay, fine, perfect. I guess the next title, life sciences strategist. Again. Too broad a title, I'm guessing whether W2 Squared LLC looks like it was her own company. So I would suggest to Sandra is lose your own LLC name and look, clients included, you've got some big names there. I would put those in as separate companies that you've worked for and the time frame that you worked for them in uh, and then break down what you were doing with each company within that so that it's very clear what companies you worked for, where that experience has come from and what job. I even have from. that as, as, as the top bullet point, um, but also yeah. just amend that job title as life science strategies that uh, no one's, no one's ever going to be searching for a life science no. strategist no. unless they're looking for specifically for a strategy type. But as a project manager, I would have been searching for a life sciences strategy. So you've just got to think, kind of like Google search, really. You want to be ranking yourself at the top of search results, right? So, And the only way to do that is to match what you would search for in the most simple terms mm -hmm. possible. It's yeah. all very nice having these fancy adjectives that make you sound incredibly smart and fancy, but... Us recruiters, we're pretty simple souls. We just we, we just want what's basic and easy. Say what you do. Yes. Um, which has brought me on to actually uh, one thing we overlooked on Sandra's profile is her features section. So this used to appear in your about section, but they've now made it its own featured section. So this area is where you can have any posts or articles that you may have written and again if you are looking to become an expert in your field or be known as an expert in your field or looking for new opportunities doing posts writing articles is a great way to show your expertise and yeah get your experience out there and not only that it boosts you up the algorithm and gets more reach because she's had 12, 12 likes and three comments on her post there. And everyone that's liked her post, whoever's following them will have a notification that they've liked Sandra's post. Whoever's commented on her post, their connections will have a notification that they've commented on those. So Sandra's post suddenly starts getting more and more reach and she's getting seen by more and more eyes. So having articles and posts is definitely a good way of getting your profile seen but let's move on to Farhad okay so Farhad I, I quite like his banner it doesn't really say much but it does say AI and he's a data scientist so I'm getting those computer vibes well uh, yeah I was I was thinking exactly the same like mm. the banner again it's it's eye-catching mm. it doesn't say his job title or anything but it, the first thing I read on there is data scientist so and then, mm. and then I see the AI part so it's very much it's congruent with job title AI computer engineer, I've got, I've got a thing. But the main thing is, I know that Farhan is a data scientist. If I was looking for a data scientist, he would come up perfect. Yeah. Like It seems uh, almost too simple to <laughs> highlight, but and he's got the I, banner I was, on. Uh, recruiting for that, that's why I'd type in. He's got a banner on, and he's actually just put data scientist roles. Brilliant. You, it's in line with your headline, we know you're a data scientist and you're looking for data scientist roles. Really simple. So let's scroll down to his... I guess just quickly to combine mm. that, so with the likes of Sandra and Diane that we've looked at mm. previously, so they have put how many years of experience they've got in what they do generally. Yeah. So if, if we combine the two and Farhad had put how many years of experience he has as mm -hmm. a data scientist, we'd be starting to get something. But we've looked at three different profiles and not... One of them has put all of those elements together. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, uh, definitely. Look, I guess in his about section, to be fair, he does go on to say experienced data scientist with a master's in artificial intelligence and over five years of back end development experience. So you might want to add something like that into your headline. My question would be what's experience, though? Yeah. Someone might say they're experienced and have two years. Someone might have five years. Someone might have, like Diane, 25 plus years. So numbers speak. Yeah, you know, money, we say money talks, but numbers talk as well. Mm -hmm. To get more specific in terms of where that experience is made up from. One so thing I can see there, again, talking about numbers talking, mm -hmm. I can see demonstrate like the the thing that stands out in that about section is twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Everyone like everyone that understands percentages. So I'm immediately drawn to that. I didn't really read much else, uh, but demonstrated project leadership with twenty percent enhancement in model accuracy. So it's kind of a bit of an achievement mm. and yes. it's it's a metric. So I always encourage people, and I'm sure you do the same, to include metric. tangible, quantifiable metrics mm. where possible. Yeah, definitely. He's got his featured section. He's got one of his certifications in there. So nice. again, brilliant. And then we scroll down and he's got his experience here. So he's a data scientist, Florida Atlantic University. So again, he has then got a breakdown of what he uh, has done, which again is kind of brilliant breakdown of what he's done. He's worked as a freelance web developer for Upwork. He's even got, by the look of it, examples of his work. So I would say that Farhad's profile is actually pretty good, right? It's, it's, it's ticking a lot of the, the general boxes. So there's skills under each of the, mm. the job thing is by yep. the looks of things yep so he's got um, his top skills filled in uh and he's got what i would skills. say is again my my initial question of like when he said i'm a, an experienced data scientist i mm. then would scroll to that experience section to mm. check how many years and one i think how many years is far had you jumping around a, a lot on the thing uh, there but. i i was i was scrolling through sorry he said he had an overall five years one year ten ten months so that's where i'd be like is that experienced? I don't, I don't necessarily know that one... I wouldn't necessarily cast one year, 10 months as experienced. I'm not sure. Again, someone who's been a data scientist for 10 years would probably say, no, they're very green. Someone mm -hmm. who's been doing it a month might say, okay, your you're experience is... That's where the quantifying yeah, come, comes into it. So let's scroll through down because I was just going ahead uh, there. So he's got all his education in, which is great. Uh, he's got all these licenses, certifications. He's even got down to projects that he's obviously completed while studying, volunteer work, skills there again. And then he's got some recommendations and some recent ones as well. So again, brilliant. Recommendations are a great way as well of showcasing your skills, experience and having someone vouch for you. So if you're working at an organisation at the moment, speak to your fellow colleagues, speak to your manager, would they be open to giving you a recommendation? And you can request that through LinkedIn or they can go into their recommendation section and give you a um, recommendation. But yeah, I would definitely say if you can get some recommendations, it just backs up that what you've got on your profile is what other people uh, are vouching for as well. So, I mean, we'll move on from, from far. Well, I, I like, I, yeah, I like, I like the profile though. It's, it's fairly functional, right? It, Okay, so let's move on from Farhad. And next we have Sab Sharma. Okay, so Sab hasn't got a, a banner picture again. It's, I would say, go and, and do it, a banner pick. Highly skilled manager. I mean, so broad. Who knows? Manager of what? Skilled manager of what? Um, you might want to get a bit more uh, specific there sab because that literally says nothing the, the profile picture is kind of a like you can't really see sab's face yeah it's a full body shot i would suggest for linkedin just go with the headshot as well because yeah it's your face that people want to see so i would definitely get a banner get a new profile picture and definitely once we understand what it is you do sab we're going to work on a, a headline for you and what else would you say about i guess profile um, pictures. I mean, I always just encourage people to smile and have it as a headshot. But is there anything else? 
you need to just smile. You don't need to pay for professional headshots. You can literally just take your phone, take a selfie, smiling, of course. I would usually say don't have your dogs, your kids in the background. And also, if you can put a bright colour on it, you can see my banner, uh, my profile picture on the side here. I've got a uh, gold behind me you could pick any color normally the brighter the better it just makes you stand out it's a bit more eye-catching especially if you're doing comments on people's profile and you've got a bright red background or bright green background it really will show your you, you know people naturally's eye will be drawn to, to your profile picture so yeah nothing too too expensive you don't need to go out and spend loads of money selfie canva background take you can remove the background on canva and replace it with a nice smart color and download it pop it on your profile easy so uh, let's scroll down to her about section so she worked in the retail industry for over several years with experience in retail management several years like let's break that down over, over several years over, over several, several years, years. Yeah. i don't understand that yeah it's, it's not it's not great english either so definitely i would say worked in the retail industry for x amount of years specific experience in retail management maybe so management positions in both big box stores and online big box stores must be something related to that sector but you might want to give a bit more detail on We're that. We're not finding out much about SAP here, are we? No, no, it could be anyone at this point. And then when we scroll down to her experience section, she's working for Euro Garages as a console operator and convenience store manager, which it doesn't... I don't really... know what a console operator no, is. Maybe that no, is... No, convenience the... store manager, yeah, I understand. Yeah, and I would probably put some bullet points around what you've been doing in that position just to just to no one's no one's going to be finding you or understanding what it is you've done as a store manager or a console operator um, and then if we move down team member grocery manager we have some kind of overview of what your responsibilities were in those roles so that we can see if we're looking for a team member or a grocery manager that we you would have the skill set that we are looking for okay and here it gets a bit weird. We've got store manager at Sunglasses Hunt, but then it's got taking a break from management position to have some family time. So are you working with Sunglass Hunt or not? I, again, that's very misleading, not really sure. And then the next one is console operator at Caltex. Uh, time to step up and continue to look for more exciting opportunities. Uh, not really that's not really what you want to be writing on your profile certainly not in those sections anyway uh, I and guess from, from my end Lucy I'm like just looking at the, the mm. level of position maybe a store manager this isn't the type of role really that as a, an agency recruiter I'd be brought in to, to ever look at like these are things that people would apply to direct but the profile on in itself if I were looking for one of these particular job mm. positions I certainly wouldn't be hovering on this profile for too long. It, it doesn't tell me anything. There's no um, relevant kind of headline banner or anything. So I would just move, move very quickly yeah. on it. There's nothing to talk about. Well, look, tips for you, Sab. I would change out these. I had to leave the job to, to move to Melbourne for visa purpose. Take that out and just put what you did in the position. So a bit of work for you to do there, Sab. But we will move on to the next profile, which is Margaret Maku. Marku, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, Marku, I think, is it? Yes, yeah. So, lovely banner pick. It's very bright and colourful, but again, probably not, mm, maybe not related to what it is she's looking for. It's not very clear from here what it is she's looking for because she's got a PhD student in applied health research and evaluation, masters of applied science and community based primary healthcare programs in global health and a lean six sigma i mean i'm confused a little bit i don't know what i don't know what margaret does and i don't know what job she's looking for um, it must be something to do with health i mean it's healthy food yeah. in the ballot pick but i, I do I'm, know I'm that lost. margaret's got a phd and a master's so she's clearly very very clever but at the moment i do not know what kind of jobs she is looking for so about section i have over six years of experience in public health fantastic project management okay and community engagement, working with diverse and under, uh, underserved populations across various settings and organisations. Again, so broad, like what organisations and yeah, what underserved populations, what were you focusing on? What was your kind of 
part to play in that. Definitely that about section needs to be expanded on and um, yeah, tell us more about what it is you do in those areas. Uh, top skills, you've got that filled in, which is great, but it's kind of the, the about section at this point is too broad. I don't even know what it is you do. Um, it's, all very, it's all very well having the skills there, but unless all of these pieces mm. that we've talked about individually on people's profiles are all put together, mm. they're all a little bit redundant done in solo, aren't they, I guess? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Because then we move on and she's got in our experience section, graduate research assistant. So immediately in outreach, I'm like, oh, wow, as maybe Margaret's just started out in her career. But let's keep going. OK, she's been a public health specialist. And then I scroll down and I'm like, wow, she's got another 10 years, ex well, 10 experiences here. So, you know, this isn't a new career for her. OK, so she's actually been working for several years how far back are we going 2011 okay so she's obviously been working she's gone back to 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 uni to get her phd which is absolutely fine um and she's held positions actually in clinical research look global There's a lot of different positions though again i would still be confused about I, I i certainly i don't think i'd ever be able to headhunt Margaret for anything because I wouldn't know what her main line of work is Trust as an application she not. might be able to highlight it but I, I as a recruiter browsing and trying to reach out to people to say I may have potential yeah. jobs for you because my clients do x I don't know what Margaret does so I could mm. I could never yeah proactively yeah. A, approach her really about anything yeah That's what I would so yeah, end. unfortunately, Margaret, it's a little bit unclear to understand what it is you really do. So I would certainly hone in on your profile in your headline and in your about section. It's amazing you've got this PhD. That's brilliant. But what job are you looking to get? What look? What are you looking to do with that PhD? Um, because at the moment, that's all your profile says is that you've got a PhD and masters. It doesn't tell me what job you're working in, want to work in. Um, so definitely a lot, I would say quite a bit of work needs to be done in that headline and about section and even, you know, refresh your banner with something more in sync with what it is you're looking to do. But let's move on now to Heather. Heather Drew is our next one. Okay, so she's got a general background banner. Again, I would, I always say with banners, look, they are another area for you to sell yourself. So I would pick something maybe less, and the same with Margaret there, less stuff going on, more streamlined, but also have kind of three key skills of what it is you do. So whether that's your job title, your experience in a certain sector, niche, program, system, think about, again, what, what it is when you're going for these jobs that they are looking for and have those as selling points on your profile. Right, so Heather Drew, training and instructional design specialist with over 15 years of experience. Great, you've got 15 years experience, still not 100% sure what a training and instructional design specialist is though. Me, me neither. <laughs> and then we've got open to work, training specialist, technical trainer, instructional designer, learning management system, like... Something to do with training and... Training, <laughs> training yeah during my most recent role as a training specialist at element technologies uh so she's leveraged her 15 years experience teaching and training learners from diverse backgrounds and contexts to do but what were you training in like that that's that's what i feel is missing so she's got multiple certifications with net documents a leading cloud place document and email management okay tech so training tech is training it? maybe again it's um it's not screaming out to us. And I guess that's the point here. You really want it to be when someone reads your about section, it's like, oh, OK, you train X, Y and Z. That, I get it completely. Like, that's what you do. Uh, Almost like an elevator pitch, isn't it? The, the, the combination it of the headline, the banner and then the about section. So you can say, OK, in like 10 seconds flat, I know exactly what, I, what you do. Exactly. And then we scroll down and again, she's got like all these experiences, but nothing filled in underneath. So I don't know. Again, training specialist at Element Technologies. What were you training at Element Technologies? Are they a training company? Like, 
yeah, we, we just need a lot more information in terms of what it is your training and what it is you do on a day to day basis to really put you in that position to go out and be headhunted. You've got the open to work banner on, which is great if your profile is optimized. If your profile is optimized and you've got the open to work banner then, and it's very clear when someone comes across your profile that you're open to work, what it is you do, then they might reach out to you. If you have the open to work banner on just because you think people are going to find you and, and offer you work, but if they don't know what you do, if it's not clear on your profile what it is you do and your profile isn't optimized, it's as good as useless. It really is. Um, so you've got there that you want to be a training specialist or technical trainer. But again, like if I was recruiting for those roles, I wouldn't know what it is you could train in it's not so, a, again it's not a profile that where i as a recruiter would be reaching out to them no about possible opportunities if they applied you know i'd perhaps review things but yeah. as soon as it, like from the profile alone and i'm assuming that you know anyone who's participated in this wants to improve their profile so that recruiters mm. contact them because let's face it like job searching is a headache mm. having to apply 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 is painful whereas if you had recruiters contacting you saying hey Seeing your profile, I think you'd be suitable for X. It's a much easier and stress-free way of doing it. Um, but in order to do that, you need to do the work up front mm. in order to sell your experience. And uh, I guess, as you keep saying, Lucy, it's that shop window, isn't it? Bring the recruiters in and they will offer you jobs. Yeah, definitely. And Heather being in training, we haven't really touched upon this in, in this episode, but obviously as well, you can do your own posts and articles. So, I mean, if Heather's maybe a, a specialist trainer in a certain field or cloud-based document email management platform, then she could maybe do kind of tips, tricks, how-tos, kind of what I have on my profile for job seekers, but for whatever it is she teaches in. Again, by sharing that kind of content, you're going to get a lot more followers to your profile because with 196 followers, I'm not being funny, but there's not many people that were potentially in your network that you could reach out to. It's quite a small network. So expand that network by connecting with more people in, in, the, in the sectors that you teach in and by having posts and articles that would be helpful to people to understand how to use these, these platforms that you teach in. But again, I think, you yeah, you could definitely improve your headline, your banner pick and definitely your about section and add in some more context of what it is you're training on in those in those sections. Right, we've got two more profiles. I'm just conscious we're rounding in on close to an hour now for this. So let's try and get this wrapped up. Next profile is Melissa Nay. Uh, amazing banner pick there. Nice. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, it just makes me want to go on holiday, but... It does, yeah. I would say that you could maybe add some bullet points in there around what it is you do. CPC-A. I have absolutely no idea what that means. Is that a guilty, job title? Guilty as well. I, is I'm it sorry. a programme? I don't know. Okay, so you've recently obtained this certification. I mean... It may be rel like it may mean something to your niche, but I would try and yeah break it down a little bit more and expand on that headline. Like, what is your? You've got sixteen years of experience, okay, in the field of forensic science. So you know, sixteen plus years experience in forensic science, CPCA certified. Again, that might mean something more to 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 someone. Okay, a criminalist supervisor. Okay, so you're working with the police. I would put some more bullet points around what it is you've been doing in each of those positions because there's not enough there. There's not, me, enough, there's not there. enough there. Yeah. To, to to go on, like if I again, if I was headhunting, mm. um, I mean, it's clearly it's not my field, but there's there's just not enough, there's too many questions, mm. um, and I'm sure if I needed to recruit someone in this space, there will be other profiles, and there's what is it like 800 million mm. profiles on LinkedIn now? Yeah. Be very quick for me to find someone else who has got the job title that I was looking for and list the experience. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I'm just, I'm just like looking at the profiles that come up down the side, other similar profiles and already they've got five professional coder, CBC, CD. I mean, again, it, it must be a certified professional coder, CPC. Yeah. It's obviously does mean something CPC 
Dashe, but um, again, you could really expand on that headline to make it more, to make it stand out even more. And I've no doubt that your 16 years of experience in the field of forensic science is a bonus or adds to that. So again, I think selling points here, I would add that to your profile. But let's move on to the final profile to review today. And that is Jessica. I would maybe uh, redo your banner, think about bullet points to add on there now. Wow. Okay, so we've got manager, administrative assistant, scheduling, personnel management, account management, customer, like, that's, again, very broad. Like, what is it you do, Jessica? If, if we're talking shop windows here, I feel like I've just walked into Walmart or Costco. Yes. Jessica, Jessica, Jessica's selling everything. Open to work, assistant, underwriting assistant, administrative representative, banking and general manager roles. Again, it's... It's it, very broad. It's so it, broad. It's you know, quite you're going... contradictory as well, isn't it? Like yeah. a manager and then an assistant. Like, yeah. what are you? Are you a manager or are you an assistant? Representative. Yeah, I, I I get it for people where you've swapped and changed in careers, but I guess if you've got experience in a certain sector, you really want to try and hone in on that specific sector to stand the best possible chance of getting a job with, because you've got those skills already. You've already got experience in that sector, I would say. Dynamic and results orientated professional with management experience in restaurant industry. Okay, <laughs> different to banking, backed with bachelor's degree. Okay, brilliant. Contradicting already what I've seen at the top of your profile in your about section. So again, I'm sitting here looking at this thinking what is it I still don't know what Jessica does proficient in overseeing day-to-day -day operations excels in planning okay great it's so broad all this says to me is it could be anyone it could be a number of different people's profiles merged into one any thoughts James yeah I mean it's, it's similar to probably most of the profiles maybe with the exception of uh Farhad where there's a little bit all over the place and it's not it's like trying to go shopping for a specific mm -hmm. i don't know jumper pair of shoes but all the these people are highlighting is just it's so broad do you, do you know what i mean it's 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 like i don't know i couldn't say oh i need i need this one thing jessica's yeah. got it like it's it's kind of almost trying to spin too many plates at once just means that you're just not going to keep any of them yeah um, and everything's going to come crashing down and it, so it, it really just needs to be that that one sole focus and i know people feel like they're cutting off loads of opportunities mm -hmm. but by shooting for 10 targets at once um not going to hit never going to hit any of them you just yeah. need to shoot at one target you've got much more chance of, of hitting it and i've just seen jessica i think so she's working in the banking sector at the moment okay great so you've got a year 10 months experience uh are you, hopefully you're still working there so i would maybe target the banking sector but specifically that you've got wits barbecue i'm guessing that's where your food experience comes from i would look at where your experience comes from and try and target specifically again you've got um your uh waitress there so clearly you've got experience in, in the restaurant market and you've now got experience in banking. Pick a sector and, and target, I guess, one or the other really is what I would say. Because as James just pointed out, if you go too broad, you're just not going to hit any targets because you're you're shooting in about a million different directions. So if well, you you're, you're only... always lose to someone who who is. Yeah. Like, you know, it's kind of like if you are wanting to hire an electrician you hire an electrician over a general handyman if you want a plumber you hire a plumber over a general handyman if you want you know whatever like let's talk about like trades for a second if you want something specific you hire that individual mm. if you want you know groceries you will go to the grocery store you don't go to something big and generic oh sometimes you do but you know if you want something niche and focused you're always going to pick the specialist yeah uh, once you get later in your career and you've been there and done it, you can start generalizing more. But for most cases, certainly 2024, having that clear focus, clear target is so important. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Well, I am going to stop sharing there and we will wrap this up, James. So I guess the key takeaway points here are banner pick. So use Canva. 
they have loads of templates on there that you can use download a template put three kind of bullet points job title skill set maybe some tools that you're really good at using systems etc profile picture again no dogs no children no full body shots just a headshot use your phone take a selfie put it into canva remove the background put a nice bright color on the back headline 220 characters characters to sell yourself so in this you want to be selling who you are what it is you do and what value you can add and then on your about section you want to expand on that so that by the time the reader's seen those just those short sections they're picking up the phone because they're like wow this person has the skills that I need uh, when you get down to the experience section of course you want to make sure that you've filled in what it is you've been doing in each of those roles so that it's very clear what it is you do on a day-to-day -day basis recommendations if you can get them from people that you've previously worked with again bonus that will help to back up what it is you've said in your profile but essentially those are the static points you need on your profile so without doing anything else if those areas aren't aligned in sync or like any of the profiles where we've seen and they're just not clear why would everyone stop at your profile and want to reach out to you if it's too broad so get super focused on what it is you want to target and make sure that your profile is selling those we'll wrap that episode up there because i'm conscious on time but thank you james again for joining me and yet yeah, we will aim to do another one of these another time great stuff